Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, as my face becomes blurry and then not blurry again through the magic of focusing cameras. Welcome to the iRacing Today Radio Show for June the 3rd, 2016. This is episode number 144. My name is Trevor Cameron. I am your host. And with me, who is in a storm that may or may not be happening, and I don't know, it's Mr. Chad Dalton. I haven't talked to you in like forever, so how you doing tonight, Chad? Oh, I'm doing great, man. It's good to hear your voice again. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear, man. It's good. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good job, man. It's a good thing, man. <laughs> Turn the boom out. You did there. well <laughs> on that solo show. You did well. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. I was, you know, had to get used to the whole talking to myself thing. You know, it was a, it was a short yeah. show. I mean, you know, there wasn't anybody to yeah. play off of. You know. No. There and are uh, there are people that are cleaning their swimming pool outside of my window, so that's important. Well, there you go. I mean, in, in, if they get too close, um, you know, tell me if I have to call the authorities. You know, if the well, what I was thinking was we're gonna have a show swimming pool party after this. Is what I'm thinking. Hmm. Or they're gonna be cleaning their pool, and then they're just gonna, you know, be not too so careful with that net thing, and they're gonna knock out your power line or something, or <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd say knock well, out your your internet, but you don't really have real internet, so yeah. Yeah, they'd have to knock down that cell phone tower over there. <laughs> Speaking of which, why don't we kick off the show with some good news? Yeah, good news. Yeah. So uh, I've been told that it might be within the next month, which would be June, because uh, I found this out in May. Um, so sometime in June, I've been told that it is quite possible that I might have internet. So, Yay! Uh, that is not confirmed. So if July comes around and I don't have internet, don't be like, but you said you were going to have it. <laughs> um, it's just what I've heard. That's the rumor, as they say. So I'm uh, fasting and praying that that actually does happen. Because um, the other day, one of my next door neighbors asked me to come fix something on their computer, and they have the cheap, crappy internet that I won't pay for. But at the same time, while I was sitting there, I was like, "Oh man, internet!" It was kind of sad, but yet it's not. So real on it, like you're like becoming a real boy. You're going to have real internet. I am. I'm. I'm getting my graduation going on. Actually, it's funny. I'm not the only person in the neighborhood that is under the same situation. Uh, one of the guys that lives down towards the end of the road is doing the exact same thing, but for different reasons that are more important than i racing. Like I don't know, work. More but uh, than he podcasting and racing. <laughs> I know, um, but he uh, is also not really c complaining per se, but you know, bringing it up uh, quite often. Like, hey, when are we gonna get this company that's gonna be really awesome? Yeah, that'd be nice. Thanks. So the people with the real internets, we want those people. All. Yes, we want those. And actually, the company that I don't like, this guy also does not like them. And he said, as far as I'm concerned, we can just throw them out of the neighborhood. I'm like, hey, man, brother, preach it. <laughs> So, anyways, I will keep you guys informed, but I'm hoping, 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 hoping that uh, June will bring me some internet. Yay, that would be nice. That way, you know, you can, we can have video chat back because then we're not worried about bandwidth anymore and all mm -hmm. this good stuff. It would be great. <sighs> good times. Good times. But for this week... And all of our good times, we're going to be talking about the show golf tournament, which is now over, uh, which I did finish at the last minute because I'm all like, oh, crap, I haven't finished that yet. So I <laughs> got a couple rounds in really quick on what was probably the last day before it shut. So uh, we'll talk about the results from that. And we've got uh, double news as far as season three is concerned. And we have the schedule, even though we're not even in week 13 yet, we're only in week 12, but we have the schedule. And the release notes, which is, like, unheard of. I don't remember the last time we had the release notes this early. Um, 
<laughs> but we have them, so we're going to go through those. We've got uh, some information on a certain endurance race happening starting, well, I think the first slot is in a few hours. And yep. we've got our poll question results. So we're going to go through all of that wonderful stuff for you guys this week after having a week off. So, you know, we're back. Yay. You know, we had Chad had like two weeks off. I had a week mm -hmm. off. It's, man, we're well rested or something. I don't know. But anyway. Uh, are this, we? Are we? Are we real? I, I don't feel well, well rested. I don't either. It's, I think it, we need to take more weeks off. It's been a, you know, a busy bit, you know, period of time here. As I mentioned, you know, I have the new job, you know, that I got and then. That starts on Monday, and I haven't actually cleaned out my old desk at my old place yet. So, but they basically said, "Hey, don't worry about that. You, you, we're not kicking you out. You can come back." I mean, because I'm still working for the same company, I'm just in a different division now. So, uh, so I got to clean that out next week. I'm on a plane on Monday for my first day of my new my new job. I'm already on the road doing some stuff. So that's you know that's going to be fun because it's a uh, a whirlwind tour. I'm flying out Monday morning. I'm having dinner with the customer on Monday night, then having another meeting after that. Then I'm going to sleep, and I'm waking up, and I'm meeting with the customer in the morning. And then I'm going to the airport and coming home. So that's going to be really weird because I'm used to long trips where I get there, I get settled, I hang out for a while. This is like, nope, get in, say your piece, get out. It's like, hmm, that's okay. I mean, it, and it's in Virginia, which is unfortunate because I like Virginia. And I, I'm not going to see none of it because I'm going to be all like, bow, run in, do some stuff, then run back out again. I'm not going to get to enjoy it. So, yeah, but that's, well, that's unfortunate. It is because I like, I really like Virginia. Ah, <sighs> But anyway, so it's been rather busy with uh, getting ready for the, the uh, new job and all that good stuff. And I don't remember if I mentioned it, but um, with the new, uh, the new job, but my home, you know, like my office is now here. <laughs> like, I, I get to home office for this job, which is super cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because uh, who needs to drive 45 minutes to get to the office when I could just go downstairs? That's a way less commute, way less traffic. Um, you know, so that's going to be pretty cool as well. You know, although I, I, I'm debating on whether or not I'm going to set up my actual work office desk area in the same room as this, my nice, comfortable Obato cockpit, because it'll be like, down at the other end of the room, it's like, huh, all right, let's get some work done, and I'll look over, it's like, huh, or I could go take some laps, but that would be irresponsible, so I have to keep working, but, oh, look at that chair over there, you know, so I might make it in a separate area where, you know, this is the area where I work, not close to where I game and podcast and all that good stuff, so we shall see. But I'm looking forward to the adventure, if nothing else. Chad, I'm not on video, so Chad doesn't know that. You know, he didn't take the uh, the hint of, "Hey, Trevor's going to take a drink here, so you should probably say something." He's all like, "I don't know what's happening. Whatever. I guess Trevor just ran out of things to say." <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but he can't see me, so it's not his fault because I'm I'm not on the uh, you know uh, on the Skype video because he has still has fake internet. So yes, but. So, yeah, good luck in your new job, and uh, enjoy your 24-hour uh, trip to Virginia. Yeah, that's, uh, well, I mean, hey, going to be fun. And at least this customer is one that I don't have to get all suit and tied up for, so that's uh, that's a bonus as well, because I need to improve upon my wardrobe now that I'm in a more s commercial and sales role, because when I visit customers before, I'm doing tech stuff, you know, at the sites. So I'm wearing jeans and a T-shirt. You know, my steel-toed boots. That's a nice, easy, you know, easy way to get all, you know, to get ready. Now I have to find, like, shirts with buttons on them and things. And, okay, apparently that's, I'm going to have to buy some more stuff. Because the last time I wore, I was in a place where I had to wear shirts with buttons. I was um, <coughs> slightly skinnier and younger, so none of that fits anymore really well. So I have to go buy new stuff. So, or lose a bunch of weight. But it's old anyway. So I should buy new stuff. But anyway, golf tournament. Uh, like I said, I, may, um, I didn't stream my last two rounds. I streamed the first two rounds, but uh, I didn't stream the last two rounds because I literally did it on the 31st because I was away for a week, which is why there was no show last week. So we came back from our vacation 
And then I didn't get back in the swing of things, and I was sitting around on the 31st at night, and I said, oh crap, I haven't finished the tournament. I go I need to go do that right now. And then I did, so. But, uh, so, I understand you have the results. I don't, I don't know how you pull those, because I, once I'm done the tournament, I don't even know how to go back and get them, but you've figured it out, Mr. Golf Designer Guy. Yeah. Uh, it's not hard. You just go to your My Plate events, and it'll show it up. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, but what it does do is it only shows the overall leaderboard for the whole four days hmm. and not the individual two things. So, But I do know from memory, supposedly, this <laughs> could technically be unofficial, but... Um, that, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's official that Adam Hollick uh, won the first two rounds uh, at the original BCGC. Um, and I believe he shot one over par, if I'm not mistaken, for the total of his two days. One over, uh, one um, over par? Seriously? Yes. Man. Wait till uh, you get to my score. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that... So, that's only for the first two rounds, and then the last two rounds, I won, but I couldn't tell you what I scored, um, because I kind of forgot. It was a couple over par, though. Hmm. Uh, I do I do know that. Um, but so Adam and I were the two individual winners for the separate courses. Um, of course, the second course being the second version of the course. Go figure. Um, and then the overall leaderboard is where the fun comes in and where everybody's going to get mentioned here. So, the cool guy named Itch Chadillac uh, won the overall tournament at 12 over par. Man. Nothing rigged about that. No, no and, and also not really stinking up the joint like you know we had last tournament where some guy just beat yeah. the crap out of the course and ran away with it. So, you know, at least... Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Adam Hollick ended up finishing in second place at 21 over par. He struggled a little bit more uh, because of the wins, I remember him telling me, um, in rounds three and four. Actually, my round three, I was doing superbly well on. I was three under par going to the 15th hole, and then it all kind of fell apart. Huh. Um, I shot three over <laughs> on 15. Wow. I hate that. <laughs> um, and then I parred the rest of the way. So I ended up finishing even in that round. And then a couple over, I think, in the uh, final round. It was a little bit more difficult. Huh. So but back to the leaderboard. Uh, Roby finished in third place at 43 over par. Not bad for somebody that I believe said he hadn't played the game in a while. Hmm. Um, Quantum Cupcake came home in fourth place with a 53 over par score. Uh, fifth place was Brick Iron Jaw. Not sure who that is, but really cool name. Uh, they finished at 55 over par in fifth place. Uh, in sixth place was Red Trade Feather at 56 over par. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, in seventh place was Ratface. Yay, finally got to me. <laughs> 62 over par. 62. What was the person well, that uh, the what was the person ahead of me? What was their score 56. again? 56. 56. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you beat Jeff McPherson, uh, who finished in eighth place by um, eight shots. Jeff finished at 70 over par. Nice even number there. Um, Scooter 17 finished in ninth at 74 over par. And then my personal favorite in 10th place, Jupiter Bird, came home with a plus 77 round. Hmm. Way to be 77 strong, Jupiter Bird. Yep. Last but not least, for the four-day event and a BCGC course record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he couldn't go one more. I don't know why. I've complained to this fella about this. I wish he'd gone one more shot. He was so close. But Dean Mull finished in last at 99 over par. <laughs> oh, dear. Why couldn't you just get one more stroke to make it 100? I See, mean, really? I mean, you're going to go that You're gonna go that far. You might as well go all the way, you know? Exactly. So uh, kind of disappointed in Dean. But anyways, so that is the overall official final results of the first ever tournament played 
at Bear Creek Golf Club, which of course was with the first two versions where I was making some fixes and slight changes. So um, I appreciate all you guys playing in it and giving me your feedback. Um, everything that between you guys and the uh, folks over at TGC Tours, every feedback, piece of feedback that I've gotten, uh, A, I'm going to use to try to improve Bear Creek in the future if it if in fact it does host host a tournament. Um, I will make some modifications to it to prepare it for that. And then B, it is also all of that knowledge is being put into the next two courses that I'm building. And as Trevor mentioned on the show a couple weeks ago, I'm building two of them at the same time on the same plot of land. So I have taken a lot of that knowledge and I'm trying to put it, uh, well, so far I am putting it into this course. Um, well, these courses. Uh, as of right now, I am probably 50 to 55% done with these two new ones. Hmm. going to kind of combine that into one just for clarity's sake. And um, I'm getting ready to work on the sand traps, which... And by getting ready to work, I mean I'm going to be placing them. I'm not going to be sculpting them or anything, just putting them down. And then I'll go into the sculpting and undulating and contouring and whatever other word you want to use. Uh, that process, which will take probably a good couple of weeks because of A, life, and B, there are now 36 holes instead of 18. Hmm. So, um, And then i got to do a lot of test playing, which is going to be tricky because I have to pick up all the tees and move them to the other course, play it, then pick up all the tees, move it to the other course and play it. So that'll be a little time consuming, but um, progress is coming along and it's looking kind of nice. So uh, hopefully I will get it released by the end of June, if not beginning of July. So we'll see how that goes. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Ah, <sighs> so... <Another. laughs> Yeah, sixty-two. That was uh, and it, and it's funny too because for one, for one moment, I was leading the second half of all of that, the 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 second two rounds because yeah. on the very first hole of the you know of those two rounds, I actually got a birdie on the very first hole. It's like, and I was the only one. Everybody else was even or above. It's like, haha. For this moment, my name is ahead of everybody else because it wasn't taken into account the previous two rounds. It was just, you know. Yeah. So it's like, yep, at this moment, everything is good. And then it all fell apart. So On the second hole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and then just See, continued. That's the way it was designed. Then just continued to tumble down the hill. Which is exactly what I said to myself about when I was playing my third round and got to hole 15. And I, like, I got ready to hit the tee shot, and I hit the perfect shot. And it almost stopped rolling. Like, it was so close. It lost, it had just about lost all of its speed. And then it found just a trickle of speed to carry on. And it sailed all the way to the water. And I was like, really? <laughs> really? Really? Like, seriously? Really? <laughs> really? That's what we're going to do right now? Really? So, yeah. And then uh, I hit it in the bunker. And then I chipped it out of the bunker. And then I chipped it over the well not over the green but over the hole and didn't make the next putt so I made a triple bogey I was going to say what are you me yeah, yeah. did you like that uh, new 7th uh, pin placement there 7th hole Oh, being sure. on the left side yeah I was going to say because I didn't do that as I actually hit the like got onto the green and missed the bunker on that one I believe so I don't even think I realized it wasn't in the death spot because <laughs> I ended up just hit actually getting the green instead of, you know, the sand trap before or after it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. cool. Well, I mean, if and if you watch my rounds when that's on the first two rounds and it was right in the middle, it's exactly what I did all over again, just boom, 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 boom. Over and mm -hmm. over and over. It's like, why can't I stop this from happening? <laughs> yep. <sighs> but I couldn't. Oh, well. But anyway. Oh, well. It was fun. I didn't end up in last, so I guess that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I would say so. <sighs> but it was, um, it was fun. And, uh, Fun and challenging, so hopefully the uh, next uh, next tournament 
won't be as challenging. It'll be all like, hey, here you go. It's okay. We're, well, we're my plan out, with yeah. when I get these next two courses released is that I'm going to, for our show tournament, I'm going to release a firm version with some good speed uh, of of each course and then a more soft and not as fast of each course. Hmm. So you'll have your pick. And part of the reason why I want to do that is because I want to see how each course plays with that uh, different scenario there. So um, anyways, that's my plan for the next one. But uh, we'll get there when we get there. Cool. So thank you, or thank you to everybody who came out and participated and, and uh, had some fun out on the uh, the old links because hey we can't be race car drivers all the time sometimes yep. we got a golf yep and we did yep ah <sighs> all right so but back to things that are racing related such as hey it's week twelve and I didn't even realize it because until you said the other day it's <laughs> like hey. <laughs> We're week 13 is like next week. And we're like, seriously? It's like, yep. It's like, huh. <laughs> well, okay yeah. then. I didn't realize it either. Somebody was like, and here's the season three schedule on Twitter. And I'm like, well, that's got to be some kind of a joke. <laughs> and, you know, like, but I didn't click on it. And then I saw somebody else say, yay, the season three schedule's out. And I'm like, okay, well, now those two people don't know each other. So it can't be a joke. And then I looked and, oh my gosh, it's week 12. And that's when I sent the message to Trevor. <laughs> It's like, did you know it's week 12? It's like, oh, by the way, hey, let's, uh, we should probably get on our, uh, you know, get, get on point here because, um, we're about to enter into season three. Yeah. So they released the schedule for the, uh, for season three. Uh, the highlights of said schedule is, well, you know, what Steve will usually do is he'll put out, you know, a couple of items to note and then the actual schedule itself in PDF which is getting better and better looking with the you know, actual mm -hmm. table of contents and stuff. It's quite awesome and very easy yep. to navigate. But yep. the items to note that he says are the Rough Cup is now open setup. And if I remember correctly, I believe I heard a lot of people complaining that it wasn't open setup, so I think they will be happy. <laughs> well, I'm going to complain that it is open setup because I liked it being fixed. <laughs> Opposite day. There is a new rough GT3 series that is fixed. It's, ah, uh, man, the fix is in. It's always going to be that yeah. Gregor Hutu guy winning. Uh, I knew it. Uh, <laughs> so a new fix setup for the GT3 version of the rough. So if you want to get your fixed rough racing in, it's there as well. Uh, the Ford GT will move into the GT3 class and replace the rough track. Man, the roughs are... They, they, Apparently they just said, you know what? We don't like what we're doing with this car. Let's know. Let's shuffle it all over the place. Let's change everything. <laughs> uh, this will not show up on the PDF until the 13th week. Well, I already have the PDF downloaded to my computer. How are they going to fix it? Are you saying you're <laughs> hacking my computer, Steve? I'm going to go look at the PDF on the 13th and be all, or on the during week 13 and be all like, oh, we changed a couple things for you. It's okay. The antivirus didn't detect it. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing they'll probably make a new PDF. Uh, let's see. The prototype and GT challenge is back with the HPD, GT, no, Ford GT, and GT1 cars. Oh, hallelujah. More GT names. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's the GT, 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 GT. <laughs> we didn't have enough pre previously, so I'm glad we got more. The IMSA series is now the VET DP German GT. I love that. The German GT3 cars. We got our GT3 cars. These are the German ones. Um, and the rough C-spec, <laughs> because it's rough season, apparently. Um, the Radical is back as a standalone series. And my personal favorite from all of this, uh, the Verizon IndyCar series is, is an open setup road series with both oval and road races. So they are doing what everybody's been asking them to do since forever with the IndyCar series and making a combined series that is now... And it's not even a road one week and an oval because the way they ran it before was they had two separate series. This is the road one, this is the oval one. Each one only runs every second week, but they're not the same series, so it's now... This is the Verizon IndyCar series. It does both. Boom. Which is perfect because that's what it should always have been. 
I don't know if there was a technical limitation in doing that before. I mean, obviously, they did it with the Winter Series uh, recently, but uh, uh, the thing that's exciting about that is the fact that it's all of that, but it's a normal, just the way that it always runs, um, you know, uh, third or 12-week series with, uh, you know, road races going off every two hours, so it's not a special event type thing, which is what makes it really appealing to me because with my schedule and everything, it was hard to do those 25 weeks when I did the Winter Series. Now, I can kind of get in whenever I can get in, and based on the participation in the IndyCar Series, I'm guessing we'll probably not have too hard of a time if you, you know, kind of try to race at a normal time and getting into a uh, an official series. So, those are the highlights. Chad's in a windstorm, as always. We're, one of these days, we'll figure out why that happens when he doesn't talk. I think this microphone going. This microphone's all like, I can't hear you. I'm just going to keep boosting up the volume until I can hear something. I need to feel again. My, my the microphone is just like I, I can only feel if I hear noise. So I'm just going to turn up the boost until I hear something. It's my guess. Uh, so my plans uh, again. Plans are just in my world. They're about as good as the, you know, well. They're not very good normally, you know, because, hey, my life is busy and junk. But my intention, I guess is better than plan, is to race in that Verizon IndyCar series because it's perfect for me because I've already got the comfort level with the IndyCar. I like the IndyCar. It's doing both road and oval, and it's not on a set schedule like the winter series was where I had to really kind of work my life around it to make those races. So I am super pumped for that series being the way it is. And, and, and then on top of that, like the first four weeks, it's Spa, which uh, there was the only one the course that I actually got on the podium with. Uh, only? And it was the first one I got on the podium with in the Winter Series, so I'm quite comfortable. I've already actually raced uh, some practice laps there, getting ready for that. Uh, I just wanted to see. It's like, okay, well, let's, you know, uh, Spa. Let's do some laps at Spa. So I actually sat down last night and did some laps at Spa in the Indy car, and it's like, yep, this is a fun track to race in this car. Uh, but yeah, so the series goes Spa, then to Road America, and we all know my love of that course, then to Charlotte Motor Speedway, which is a nice, easy-ish oval for the IndyCar, uh, as long as you kind of realize, you know, that maybe flat out isn't the best idea sometimes, and you have to kind of lift a little bit, and then on to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, which, uh, while I had issues with, uh, if you remember in the Winter Series, uh, I actually wasn't doing too, too bad on that, but then there was people crashing in front of me, and things went bad, but I, I really like the course, so it is a, um, it's a good, a good schedule, at least, you know, the beginning, and then some of the other stuff is not too bad either, but uh, those are definitely the highlights, like that first four weeks is perfect for getting, getting me excited about getting into that series, so... That is what we have to look forward in Season 3. Of course, they have a PDF with everything listed in there. Uh, so you can check that out. We'll put a link in the show notes for you to go check it out. Uh, I don't know if you've actually had a chance to look at it, Chad, or... Um, no, <laughs> but I can tell you that my Season 3 plans are probably going to be... Um, jump in anything I feel like jumping into. Um, originally, you guys may remember from several months back, I wanted to participate in the V8 supercar starting in this season, but I don't really have my real internet yet, and uh, the last few times that I've raced on my fake internet, it's still been great, and it's kept me connected, but it's been a little more jumpy, and people have reported a little bit more blinking, so I've actually not been racing as much recently. Um, as a result, uh, just because, like, if it's a, like, for example, you know, a big long endurance race, that's a little different because you're more likely to be more spread out mm. than you would be, you know, in these shorter V8 races where you're probably going to be around people more. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> I really want to do that IndyCar series that Trevor's mentioning there, but I'm still kind of leery about my internet. So, I'll be kind of hit and miss for season three. Um, Still got a few things, you know, that are on my schedule, like that Mustang series, uh, which, by the way, the next one, the uh, the Wendy's race, yeah, 
I don't know why I was going to say Wendy's, but Wendy's? Um, the Wendy's race, um, the Watkins Glen race is what I was looking for, mm. is actually now going to be broadcasted. Uh, whereas we had told you, I guess when Trevor did the show solo, that only the last race of the season was going to be broadcasted, but they've scundered up enough money to get the Watkins Glen one done as well. So that one will be broadcasted. Um, but I've got that series, which is down to like, I don't know, four or, four or five races left now. And then uh, Danny and I are doing the ITSR World Endurance Championship Series, and I'm still going to be doing that. We're going with that series actually on Monday uh, to Daytona Cool. in the Audis. Uh, so I am quite, a, and that's Daytona Road. So I'm really excited about that one because obviously know a thing or two about that track. So um, I am, like I said, going to be a little spotty on my racing, and I'll. And then my hope is that maybe midway through the season, I, you know, I get my real internet, then I might pick up something and, and race it. Maybe the IndyCar series or something, uh, just because I'll be coming in late to a season. Um, so I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm quite happy that they have uh, found a way to to broadcast that race at Watkins Glen because I was even if they don't broadcast any of the rest of them before between now and the end of the season, uh, I was disappointed that that one wasn't going to be because that's a uh, I, I I anticipate that being a fun course to call uh, yeah. a race with and you know I'm obviously that's a track that I am you know incredibly familiar with so it, you know that. Any time you're really familiar with the track, it makes it a lot easier when you're doing the broadcast and the calling of the race. So, uh, so I'm looking very fo- very much forward to uh, to being up in the booth for for that race. And uh, being a shorter track, obviously, it's going to have you know probably a little bit more traffic and you know probably some uh, pretty good battles because of it. Although I don't know what the difference will be between the uh, the Mazdas and the Fords, because just kind of thinking it through, there's not. A lot of really long straight stretch kind of uh, areas where the Ford, you know, and its muscle is going to really uh, outshine the Mustang. The Mustang's going to be a little bit more nimble around the corners. So I bet you the lap times are going to be fairly similar, I'd imagine. So, which could make it even more exciting because of that. So, so yep. And- so that race is in two weeks, June 18th, and it will be broadcasted. And of course, we'll send out our tweets and another reminder before then. But um, I'm excited, too, because Hawkins Glen is going to be one of my better chances, I hope, anyways, uh, at getting a uh, really good finish. And Phillip Island, you know, said the same thing there and had a good finish going until there wasn't any gas in my car anymore. <laughs> um, so hopefully that'll be a little different at the Glen. Excellent. And uh, while we're on the subject, um, I am also broadcasting another race with the Global Sim Racing Channel um, gentlemen on this weekend on Sunday. Sunday? Sunday, Yeah. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday night. um, I believe that's around 7 o'clock Eastern, give or take. And that will be with the guys that I just did a couple weeks ago, uh, the Pacific Majors, and they are doing... Two weeks ago, they we did their full-length version of the Coke 600, and this week they are doing their full-length version of the Indy 500. So uh, that should be an interesting race to call because those uh, anybody who watched well, if you've raced the Indy card at Indy or you know watched the Indy 500, those cars are can be on rails for. A large majority of the time and then you make one slight mistake or you enter a corner just slightly on the wrong line and you're in big trouble so uh, it should be a interesting race so I uh, look forward to a l- another long broadcast I think we entertain the, uh, the the fine uh, fans well enough during the coke 600 because it's hard to you know to tell stories for 600 miles and uh, I think we did a pretty good job so uh, here's hoping we can uh, do it for another 500 miles on Sunday. So watch my Twitter. I'll put up a link to uh, to that race once we get ready to go live. So, ah, so that was that. And uh, so Watkins Glen, good stuff. The season three schedule is out. Put a link in the show notes. Uh, I am planning on doing the Verizon series because Indy cars are awesome. And then they came out and said, "Oh, and by the way, here's the release notes too." I mean, we are. Well, these came out. Yeah, it was today. 
So, uh, you know, a full Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, like a full four days before the, you know, the, um, uh, the build actually goes live. Although I was looking through there and I only found a couple of those I wish I knew before uh, type <laughs> things. So, um, you know, there's none of that stuff that was super, you know, wow, I've got to see that. But there's a couple little things in there. But so. Well, you have time. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's you know, that's great. At least till Monday, and then it's uh, releasing on Tuesday, which is June the seventh. Um, in the, I believe they're starting it in the wee hours of the morning, at least here in North America, and I believe it's by noon Eastern that they are planning on being back up and functioning. Uh, and that all suits me fine because hey, you guys can go out there and test it and load the servers and everything, because. I'm going to be on a plane, and I'm not getting home until like 10.30 that night, so I'm, I'm home on release day, but I won't really be doing anything because I'm going to be on a plane until late, late that night, so uh, so I probably won't get a chance to test until Wednesday. So, Season 3, if, they were, if it was to have a byline, I guess it would be Season 3, we're just going to clean up the place a bit. <laughs> it's kind of the feel for this uh, for this build, um, which is kind of what we expected at a last build, because they'd had so much issues with the build before that. So we kind of thought last build might be a little smaller and maybe a little more uh, like maintenance, I guess is a word for it. Um, but that seems to be kind of this build. Now there's new stuff in there, you know, and there there is a lot of stuff, but it's it is definitely has a much more maintenance feel to it than uh, the last bunch of builds uh, so and that's fine you know clean clean up your house i racing you know <laughs> get things uh, get your affairs in order uh, before uh, you, you know worrying about giving us new stuff i am totally 100 percent on board with that uh, that sort of mentality uh, so i guess the um well there's a couple big things in here and um you know, in order to avoid the windstorm uh, for our video uh, portion, why don't you tell us what's what just the main points are of uh, this build? Well, the season release features the brand new Italian road course, and I'm just going to call it Imola or Imola, however we're supposed to pronounce it. Um, it's Autodro Autodroma Enzo Idino Ferrari. I mean, come on, how yeah. hard is that? <laughs> Uh, I didn't say it was hard. I'm just going to say Imola because more people are probably going to recognize that than whatever you just said. Um, they also said that they have performed an extensive update to all track surfaces to better model physics collisions, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, even with tiny particles like sparks, gravel, and marbles, the dynamic track surface now includes dust and gravel. <clears throat> which is brought onto the racing service from off tracks excursions. I like that. I think they've been listening to our show because they know that you like to take some excursions. <laughs> See, and it's uh, weird. And when I read that, like, I, I thought that that was already happening. Uh, but no, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> and then to finish off the sentence that I was saying, um, and of course, all of that will affect the tires grip. Uh, they also have added the ability to retrieve more accurate statistics on incident points for all racers, which is kind of interesting, even in a replay mode. Uh, some time was also spent adjusting the 2014 V8 supercars to improve their stability and handling, which that is the latest versions of the uh, V8 supercars that we have, by the way, oh. um, and bringing the 2016 digital dashboards to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series vehicle, Chevy, Ford, and Toyota, which won't do me any good because I can't see them. <laughs> uh, but we, speaking of iRacing, have even added preliminary DirectX 11 support for those of you with an Oculus Rift. Ding, 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 ding. That's that was, one of the big things. Yeah, that was a that was a big ticket <laughs> item because now that they have the commercial version of the Rift out there to at least half a dozen people. Apparently, they've been having some supply <laughs> issues, but um, at least some people have those out there, the yeah. actual commercial release version. So uh, it is good that they have put in support so that because uh, apparently it was before that 
they could use their development kits, but once the commercial version released, apparently it was not compatible because iRacing needed to be updated to use it. So, good that they got on that and uh, pushed that out for this build because apparently <coughs> the word on the street was everybody was expecting it to not be in this build. Uh, they were expecting it to be a little bit later on in the year. So that was a, uh, a good one to see for those with Rift. Absolutely. Um, along with a host of other bug fixes, balance tweaks, and minor updates, they also, and finally, and I'm kind of actually really excited to see this, completed an artistic overhaul of South Boston Speedway to help it shine with the latest iRacing graphics update. Hmm. So, not uh, sure exactly what that means, but I'm looking forward to going out and trying it now because... As many of you know, on the oval side, that's one of the first tracks that you see. So it would be kind of nice to have it be all like spit shining and stuff. Also one of the only tracks that I've, or one of the few tracks that I've visited in real life. I didn't get to Yay. go out to it and there was nothing happening, but I was there <laughs> because I was Nothing's passing by happening. it. So yeah. Huh, and okay. So that's the, the general... Uh, just of the the major points um like i said the, that the the part that i like about that is that whole you know improve continuing to improve the dynamic track surface and making your car react realistically with things other than the track you know because you know there's always something else other than the track that your car is always uh interacting with uh i can't wait for the day when they have you know that car blew its engine, so now there is oil on the track, you know, stuff like that. And, Whee! You know, that, I think, is not far off if they can make <clears throat> dust and gravel interact with your tires from uh, off-road excursions. So, uh, They're making a bunch of changes to the website, um, just in ways to make it a little bit easier to use. Uh, again, as if you're not familiar with the show, we're not going to go through and read this entire thing because, well, that's a waste of time and would probably put most of you to sleep. <laughs> Unless you're looking for, you know, a uh, bedtime story for, you know, to try to, you know, ease you off. You know, I mean, I bet you'll be interesting if we had Morgan Freeman come in and, and read this. Then you'd probably stay interested. <laughs> he has a very narrative type voice. And I would probably pay good money to hear Nord, uh, Morgan Freeman uh, read the release notes. Sadly, he is not on our payroll. So uh, <laughs> that would be cool, though. <laughs> I wish I, and at this point in time, I wish I could do a Morgan Freeman uh, impression, but that's not in my repertoire, so I can't, uh, I can't even follow up on that on that particular joke, unfortunately. Um, not a lot. I mean, not, not a lot really jumped out at me with the stuff that they're doing um, to the website. A lot of, and I hate the term, but you know, quality of life improvements. Uh, type thing where you know results are going to be a little bit easier fixed to fixed an issue, fixed an issue, fixed an issue, fixed an issue, fixed an issue. Yeah, on the my per fixed an issue on the my personal stats page where your last ten races sometimes would not load. It's like which was happening to me. It's like uh, so how many how many races I've raced in the last little bit? None. Oh, <laughs> forever <laughs> we alone. We took all of your finishes away from you. <laughs> Although, no, I think they did this before in the last build, but here, I like this line, all chat features have been removed. Like, yep. Like, before they said, well, we, we, got, we got rid of the pre-race chat and stuff like that. Da, 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 da. It's like, now they're just like, yeah, we found some, there was some hiding underneath the sofa. We, we, <laughs> we chased them out with the broom. We've removed them. All chat features are gone. Do not talk to people. Do not talk to the chat room people. Just get, it's gone. Get away. You know, so... Um, and the previous and past seasons page is now depreciated. I I can't even guess what that might mean. <laughs> it, it it lost value. Like my house is depreciated. Is that what's what's going on here? Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so they fixed some stuff with the or are about to fix some stuff with the website. I want to go see if the previous and past seasons page are appreciated now, because they're apparently about to be depreciated. <laughs> ah, well, they've made some changes to the paint kit with some logos and updating and adding and all that good stuff. Uh, let's see. And here, talking about the dynamic track 
Dust and gravel. Here's the specific thing that they say. Dust and gravel can now be dragged and thrown onto the track by wayward cars. Huh. Way to stereotype me. Or, you know, put me in a box, man. I'm a wayward card. And sometimes I make <laughs> mistakes. You know, it, it happens. Sometimes I want to see. Can I get on the other side of the fence at Lime Rock? Yes, you can. That's not wayward. That was intentional. Um, it says, which then interacts with the tires to affect grip and accumulation of debris on the tires. The way the dynamic track is stored in a replay has been improved to allow sudden changes in the track surface state to be seen immediately. So I guess maybe the replays weren't keeping up with what is changing? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Uh, but apparently they have made a change to that. Ha! Uh, <laughs> under rendering, they say the cube maps for all tracks have been updated. This will cause much brighter reflections off of objects. I don't know what a cube map is. And I'm guessing it has something to do with ice cubes. It has to. Uh, so. What scares me the most about this, though, this will cause much brighter reflections off of objects. Are we just going to be blinded now? <laughs> just <laughs> race and night at Bristol. Ah! Nobody can see anything. <laughs> I can't see turn one. Yeah. Uh, there has been more important to see stuff indeed yes but uh but if you let's say if you were uh doing night racing the post-processing effects have been removed from the cube maps for all night tracks this was useful in the past but is no longer needed so hmm. oh, okay so the cube maps for all tracks have been updated which makes things reflect brighter but the post-processing effects on the cube maps has been removed so you have updated cube maps, but you're not processing them anymore. You just, you know, the cube maps know what to do, is what they're saying. So, uh, but it'd be cool to see what they mean by brighter reflections, because uh, I mean that's one thing that's always cool in night racing is the fact that you know, you can see all the lights and it, it, everything just looks so much different at night. Uh, so it'd be uh, kind of cool to see if this makes things look a lot, uh, a lot more realistic, a lot, you know, just cooler, I guess, you know, during night races. So we shall have to see. Um, yeah. Fixed a crash that would happen when trying to draw a lot of cars in the world with headlights. <laughs> so, hey, you're doing an endurance race at night. Well, everybody shut their lights off or you're gonna crash the sim. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, um, <laughs> that seems like a good thing to fix. Um... Let's see. Um, on DirectX 9, they fixed one thing. Just one thing only. Here's DirectX 9. We fixed a memory leak that occurred when rendering a tech track. So in DirectX 9, they, which is a thing that they're trying not to support anymore as they move into DirectX 11, they fixed a thing that nobody uses. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> well, except a lot of people do use Long Beach. Uh, just because it is a fun track to race. I've seen a lot of leagues use it. Oh, really? Hmm. Even though it's kind of ugly looking on the outside. But um, one of the things that you skipped that I thought was funny is hang logging is now disabled by default but can be enabled in order to help us investigate issues. Hang logging. Yeah, it's, you know, if you're uh, a lumberjack uh, and you are in... <laughs> well, what I was thinking... <laughs> Is if you've committed some murder, you're being hung for it. Or perhaps you are co committing murder on people by hanging them. Uh, That's true. And that is now... Uh, it's like a game, a game of hangman. <laughs> but it's disabled by default. So, you know, unless you want to get caught. Uh, then... Yeah. Um, enter to direct X11. There are a few things that I thought was interesting. Um, the... Glowing light effects now interact more accurately with fog. And the ghost car now renders correctly. That's good. What, um, what did they, it render like before? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> A box. Um, they also fixed an issue with track shaders when using the low shader detail setting. And then they fixed an issue where random flickers of geometry could... Render, along with some particles. Hmm. They also fixed several issues related to the anti-aliasing of painted lines and other surface de uh, decals at both night and day 
tracks. Not sure why they had to point that out. It's like they could have just said on tracks or just <laughs> stopped at, deca on both at decals. Day and night. <laughs> It's like, whoa. So basically, we covered all of our ground here. Well, okay, I guess maybe there's a difference with the late afternoon or the early morning one or whatever, maybe. But that's still technically day, so probably not. They could have just stopped at decals. <laughs> and yes. been now, done my it. personal favorite that I told Trevor about before the show, uh, this was the only thing that I got out of this entire release notes that I thought was cool. Because it doesn't make any sense, and I find it funny. <laughs> if DirectX 11 fails to report a display mode, a fake display mode is created. This may allow the simulator to operate in a windowed mode, displayed mode, sorry, or a fake full screen. It's what, not real people. What, what does any of that even mean? <laughs> Fake full screen. It's like, it, so it's not really full screen? It's. <laughs> we wanted you to think that it's full screen, but in reality, it's not. As a matter of fact, if you look closely, there's a border around here. Haha, -ha, fooled you. Fake. <laughs> yeah, or. Uh, and, and a fake display mode. It's like. Yeah, I know. It's like, if you're. We can't tell you what a display mode is, so we're just going to make one up. I don't know. It's. 1935 by 1081? <laughs> is that a fake display mode? I mean, it, yeah. Ah, <sighs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. So that was, uh, I found that amusing. But the one right below it is actually important to note for those of you that may be new to the sim. And by new to the sim, I mean future from this point on, new to the sim. Hmm. Uh, all new installations of iRacing will now default to DirectX 11. Right. Which is uh, according to the plan that they laid out when they released DirectX 11, where they said, okay, first we're going to do it in this wave, and we're going to say it's going to default to DirectX 9. You can turn on 11 if you want. And we'll kind of see if there's any bugs and see you know, if there's stuff that we have to fix. And you can always go back to 9. They said the next phase was it was going to be default 11, but you could go roll back to 9 if you're having problems and then the next build will be hey DirectX 9 get out of here, you're no longer wanted it's all DirectX yep. 11 all the time so sounds like by making this move that to me says that they haven't encountered any large problems that they haven't been able to solve and everything's on target with rolling out DirectX 11 as the only way to go by the end of the year so that's, that's what I read in that is that everything is A-OK -okay and on schedule so Yes, I get that as well. Um, so popcorn FX for you, because we love our popcorn FX. Uh, all tracks now have complete particle collision, so particles such as dirt, sparks, and gravel can now bounce along the surface instead of just passing through the environment. See, yeah, the sparks and stuff, like I like, I almost my my first instinct uh, with you know seeing those bounce along is you know load up Bristol Knight put my ride heights really low so my splitter's <laughs> bouncing against the ground and see if I can make the sparks bounce about on the track. That's uh, my first instinct to try with that one. But uh, Yes. So, um, but yeah, I mean, like, we, we mentioned it when, you know, during the last build, you know, when I went out and tried and tried to get dirt and stuff on my, you know, my tires and having it bounce around, like, it just looks super cool. It's not something that you're really going to notice that much, but... You know, you look in the replay, you slow things down, and it's like, and there's individual rocks and, you know, and dirt and stuff like that bouncing along. So anything they do to make that look cooler, more realistic, more, uh, you know, just real objects interacting with a real environment kind of thing is uh, pretty dang cool. So. Ah, on the audio department, they have improved road rolling, arrow, and wind sounds for all vehicles. So, uh... I guess you're going to get some better noise. Road road noise, I guess, is uh, how you put that. Uh, scrape. <laughs> Here, here's something that we need to improve. Scrape noises for Armco fence rails and vehicle under trays have been improved. So, for all of you who are wayward cars and find some Armco, well, now it's going to sound better when you're mangling the side of your car. <laughs> so, uh, so that's good to know. 
Uh, the tires have improved the effective tire grip calculations related to marbles and dust on track, which makes sense because they, you know, they're making more stuff interact with the uh, uh, with the tires and the track with dragging stuff out on there. So that makes sense. Now here's the part where I didn't get a lot of because they mentioned at the beginning and, and Chad read, read it out where making it easier to look at incident points or something along those lines. However, they however they put it uh, accurate being able to retrieve more accurate incident uh, or in accurate statistics on incident points there we go there's the sentence I was going for um, I read through this and none of that really none of it really seemed really important or relevant to be honest with you uh, I don't know if any, it, none of it just it's I mean well the info tab on the session screen will now show your incident point count for the current session. In a team event, it will also show the count for your team as a whole. Well, that's a useful thing to have, you know, if you're in the pits or, you know, because you mangled your car and you're looking at it or it's a team event and you're not currently driving, then you can actually get an accurate idea where your incidents stand if there's an incident limited on the race. Um, that's useful because before... You just kind of had to scroll through your chat window and see the last time you got one and see what mm -hmm. that number was. Uh, so this is a more useful um, uh, tool to have. Uh, it says the entries tab now has a new INCS, I-N-C-S, not to be confused with NCIS, uh, which is a, uh, a television show. This is I-N-C-S. Uh, in a live session, you will see the incident point counts for the current session. There's no way to back up and see the incident point counts for your prior sessions. In race sessions, everyone is only able to see their own team's incident point counts. However, in a non-race session, or once a race session is complete, everyone is able to see the incident point counts for everyone. Admins are also able to see the incident point counts for everyone during a race session. Uh, you could always see everybody's incident points after a race. Uh, yeah. It shows right up on the score or the um, results page. Uh, so, uh, and you can only see, I, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not entirely, well, I guess, hmm, the entries tab, like when you're going to the sim, you have your, what, entries, results, info tabs, I think, at the bottom, um, but in race sessions, you're only able to see their own team, so it's not like you could go and say, wow, that guy's driving like an idiot, because he has, you know, 95 incident points. Uh, so you can only see, wow, I'm driving like an idiot. I have 95 incident points. <laughs> I'm not sure why they wouldn't, uh, if they can do all that, why they wouldn't just surface everybody so you can, because that seems, that's uh, to me would be a useful tool because it would be, hey, let's kind of get a feel for how people are driving. You know, maybe that uh, might be a better way, but I'm sure they have the reasons. People want to hide their shame they want to hide their incident point count. And they're like, no, 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 don't look at it. Don't look at it. The number, it is too high. Do not look at my number. It's, I don't like my number. I feel bad about myself. Um, so, that is, uh, and, well, I guess in the third point in there, when watching a replay, you will see the incident point counts for the session replay you are currently watching. The same session visibility restrictions apply to watching replays, so you cannot circumvent the restriction during an event by having a teammate save the replay and load it to see everyone's instant point. So they're very pointedly saying that they are hiding other teams and other cars' incident points um, because they say, hey, we're doing this so you can't see that. Again, I'm not entirely sure why they're hiding that information because, again, you go into a race, the result page pops up, there it is. So it's not like it's a secret. Don't know. But um, they're doing it, and they're doing it on purpose. Um, do, 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 do. Hmm. Apparently they fixed a... Or we say they fixed. I mean, build's not till next week. But uh, with the radio, they said, fixed a rare issue that... I actually read this wrong the first time, which is why I actually went to, my eyes went to it. Um, it says, fix a rare issue that could allow you to transmit a text chat message that will be rejected by the race server. Uh, somehow, I read that as <laughs> fix a rare issue that would allow you to transmit a text chat message that would reset the race server. <laughs> it's, what, it's what I read. It's like, well, that seems bad. <laughs> 
and restart race. So, <laughs> it's like, well, I don't like the way that started. Text secret text message. Do 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 do. Ha ha. Oh, the server crashed. I guess we got to restart now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, so that is not the case. So it would just make it so. Uh, apparently, if the configuration of your radio changed just as you finished the message, it was possible. Wow, this is a, in, <laughs> a a possibility within a possibility. It's like, you know, issueception here. Uh, it was possible that the message would be created with the uh, identifying information from the prior configuration of the radio. So if a set of circumstances happened in the right possible order, then it was possible that you could send a message that didn't go out. Well, that's going to be fixed, so I guess that's important. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, what on else the video, you got? On the video capture, the timestamp will no longer be appearing on your screen captures, which is nice, I'm sure. Um, they also have a new video capture library that will be added in this new build. And they have fixed an issue that was preventing some members from utilizing this feature. <laughs> <laughs> that was my second favorite thing out of all these re release notes. Oh, yeah, you know the thing you haven't been able to use? Well, now you should be able to. <laughs> yeah. Um, they then did a bunch of stuff with telemetry, which is obviously um, important for those of you that use that, but uh, I don't. And they've added some new things uh, within the telemetry, so have a look-see there. If you so desire, they've also done something that I thought was kind of cool. Um, with the ARX, which is a Logitech thing, hmm. uh, they have a new force feedback demo, which is FFB underscore demo, go figure. Um, it has been added that can help users set up force feedback for their uh, racing wheel in the sim. Hmm. I thought that was kind of a neat addition. Um, and then uh, ARX clients can now send text chat messages messages rather uh to the sim via the call <laughs> heed the call answer the call finish the fight <laughs> which i think if you stop right there as we did it can be funny <laughs> but really what it's doing is you're supposed to send i r a r x dot send chat string and in parentheses and quotation marks message so yeah there you go uh, additionally, those messages can include micro commands. So if you're into your micros, macros. get it on. Not right micros, there. macros. Macros, whatever. But, uh, yeah, just don't send ones that reset the Ray server. Um, or, or do it. Or what happens. do that, because awesome. Uh, Oculus Rift uh, support... The, the official line here is support for the consumer version of the Oculus Rift has been added to iRacing based on the Oculus 1.3.2 software development kit. This new support is available only in the DirectX 11 version of the simulator. I like the fact that they capitalized the word capitulate. simulator. They capitulate. Uh, <laughs> they capitulated it. Uh, the DirectX... I'm, I'm from Canada. I can make up words, and you'll just think that that's what we say up here. Uh, the, oh, so, I mean, I, I get yelled at for saying micros, but, you know, well, that's because that, That's just because that's just the wrong word. <laughs> well, so it's capital H. <laughs> <laughs> the DirectX 9 version of the simulator is still based on the Oculus 0.4.2 beta software development kit. Um, so... Yeah, so if you want to use your Rift, then it, you have to use the DirectX 11 version of the simulator. So um, it also has, and this is common for a lot of the virtual reality type things, uh, whenever the Oculus Rift is in use, the simulator will mirror its output to a resizable window on the desktop, which is quite common so that uh, people can kind of see what you're seeing, even though they don't see all the 3D and and all that stuff, uh, they can get an idea of what you're actually looking at so somebody could actually watch you doing your race stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, you may resize position and reposition this window using... <laughs> a caveat, though, is using a very small mirror window may reduce mouse pointer precision inside of the Rift. So, and the official line is, so try not to make it too tiny. 
<laughs> the window will remember any adjustments to dimensions positions between sessions so it's not something you're going to have to set up every time you load in a race server it's like all right now window i drag this and do oh i made it too tiny oh no <laughs> um i ruined it all <laughs> i destroyed everything ha ah. The, uh, and I'm not going to read through all of this, but the following section of Rift-related options will be added to the Oculus Rift section of the renderer dx11.ini file after you exit the simulator for the first time. And there are several parameters, and it kind of goes through and describes what each of those are and what you might want to change them to. So if you have a Rift consumer version of the Rift and you're going to be doing this, then um, definitely take a look at those settings to... Uh, to see if there are ones that you want to change or ones that uh, you know you might need to modify or leave alone. Uh, I suggest the Rift enabled equals one, leaving it at one because that enables the Oculus Rift detection <laughs> and support. Uh, but there's uh, other settings when it comes to performance and stuff like that. So have a read in the release notes if you have one to make sure that you're setting those to the proper thing. Ha! Huh. And uh, now for all you... Uh, you Xbox noobs out there, also the Windows 10 support for Xbox One controllers is now enabled by default, so, you know, you can go out there and wreck the leader to win a carb cup race, you Xbox noob, uh, with your Xbox One controller, which I have one. See, I, I could I could be using it. It's right there. It's actually the thing that's plugged in right now. Uh, my wheel is not plugged in. My Xbox One controller hmm. is. So I guess there's truth to the rumors that I am an Xbox. I was going to say, so the, the plot thickens a little here. Well, it does. Well, see, I have my wheel. I only have one, ever have one. I'm sure there's probably a way to have all my various peripherals hooked up, but I kind of find that they interfere with each other if I do. So I just kind of have, this is my designated U USB slot for controller type things. So I just trade out which, which one is in there. The wheel's in. The controller's in, my joystick's in, kind of thing. So I had it, the wheel hooked up last night because I was doing some laps around spa, like I mentioned, and then I went to play something else last night and needed my controller for it. So, and then I used, actually, <laughs> I went to go play Final Fantasy 13. I was in a weird mood last night. It's like, I haven't played that in forever. I should probably go back to that. And it didn't recognize the Xbox One controller. So I said, well, screw that, and didn't load that up because I didn't want to hmm. get my 360 controller. And apparently it's like, oh, well, you can enable support by doing this and going to that. It's like, nope, this was just a, <laughs> it, it, it was just on a whim. If I have to work for it, I'm moving on to the next game. So, <laughs> so I plugged it in and then didn't use it. So there's, there's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, the rest of this, uh, these release notes are about particular uh, differences made to vehicles. Anything strike your fancy in here there, Mr. Chad? And tracks. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, of course. Cars and tracks differences. Well, the Aston Martin GT1 and the Chevy Corvette GT1 got some pretty major overhauls. Um, I don't know that we'll read them on the show, but they had some aerodynamic calculations changed. Uh, several cars had the baseline set up, updated, um, through... Uh, so that you're, uh, you know, maybe not failing tech, I suppose. Mm, yeah. Um, and then I also noticed that several cars, especially on the roadside, had their mirrors adjusted. But all it says is mirrors have been adjusted. So I don't really know what that means. Like, am I going to sit down and start doing a race and then get halfway through it and realize, oh, no, my mirror's like at the sky. It's like, huh, well, what happened here is, uh, you know, your significant other jumped into your race car and it, they're... Mm. Not the same height as you, so they adjusted all the mirrors for them, and then you got in. It's like, oh no, I can't see anything. So we've adjusted that, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Or maybe they're just actually. Yeah. What does adjusted mean? Does that mean they've adjusted the I, graphics I on them? Know. They've adjusted I, their position, their field know. of view. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there was also several cars where I noticed they got a bug fix in traction control, um, to where if uh, only. Let's see. Uh, algorithm to where the is now only applied if the throttle is greater than 5%, which affects both the sound and the initial transition into active traction control when applying the throttle. Uh, that, I think, came on a few GT3 cars, and I think I saw it on some other ones as well. Uh, let's see. The most notably is BMW Z4 GT3, and then I saw it somewhere else. Where was it? 
I'm going to find it right here for GT GT3. Uh, also got it as well. Uh, the Ford Mustang FR500S, which of course is that car that I race at Watkins Glen in a couple of weeks. Mm. This is kind of cool. They updated the engine, gear shift, transmission, and brake sound. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it sounds like uh, once we get our new build in the next few days. Cool. Um, let's see. Also, some of the GT1 cars. Uh, I noticed that the pit sequence has been altered, so refueling takes place before yes. tire changer changes. The car is not lifted onto air jacks until refueling, refueling is finished, and it continues to use two tire guns and carriers. So... Uh, apparently, they were not accurately representing how these particular cars pit, and they've adjusted that, which is, by the sounds of it, going to make it for a longer pit stop. So, Well, um, and the Ford GT car got that as well. Um, and there might have been another car I saw that got that as well, but I can't find it yet. Uh, well, yeah, it was the Corvette GT1 had it, and... Uh, Aston Martin. The Aston Martin. So. And the Ford GT. Uh, the Mercedes AMG GT3, the low fuel warning has now been updated to trigger off of fuel level instead of fuel pressure, which is nice. Uh, the warning now activates when the fuel level drops below 10 liters. So, that'll be handy for those of you that drive that car a lot. Yeah, and uh, oh, when here's one that I liked. Uh, was the Dalera DW12. Uh, there is two changes. One has to do with sponsorship uh, decals and one has to do with level of detail um, in order to uh, aid performance on your computer. Uh, and that is it. Which, uh, because I'm going to be driving that car or intend to drive that car for Season 3, there was really, well, there was no changes made to its handling, which is good since I'm already familiar with how it handles, so I don't have to relearn anything, which is always good for me because I'm old and learning things is hard. So, uh, apparently they've got that car where they didn't have to make any adjustments, which makes me happy. Yes. Um, the V8 supercars we talked about earlier, they had some significant modifications made to them and the handling issues, particularly over bumps and curves. That includes... Uh, chassis torsional stiffness and available rear damping forces have been increased. Um, the spring perch offsets have been added in the garage. This provides the ability to adjust bump rubber engagements without, which I just think is cool, bump rubber. Baby bumpy bumpy um, bumpers. <laughs> without, oh gosh. Uh, changing ride heights via combined damper length and perch offset adjustments. Yeah. Spring, spring perch, I know. Offsets, uh, wow. Restart because I'm laughing. Spring perch offsets that produce less than 40 to 50 mm of shock deflection in the garage are not recommended. Uh, another important thing to note is that these vehicles now use the V6 tire model. Hmm. So um, you should feel a little bit more grip, and the tires should be more capable of maintaining grip at a higher operating temperature. And as we know, it gets pretty hot in Australia, so. Uh, here, here's one that I liked, and I will just read this. Uh, for the McLaren MP430, so the, F1, the new F1 car, fixed an issue with the deployment of the energy recovery system, the ERS system. If the driver crashed repeatedly on outlaps, the counter <laughs> that determines the amount of energy to transfer from the ERS battery for deployment to the MGU, uh, or MGUK, Motor Generator Unit Kinetic, I think is what that stands for, uh, did not reset. Once this counter reached a rule-specific maximum, no more energy could be transferred from the ERS battery to the MGUK until the driver reached the next valid lap crossing. The result was that the driver may have experienced low deployment on outlaps until they managed to successfully complete an outlap without crashing. <laughs> it's like, the, the, you can't... You can't make a lap without crashing, so you got no energy left until you can prove that <laughs> so you, you can, can make a lap. Now that that's the way it was, and they have they have fixed an issue with it. I don't know. I think they should just leave it the way it was because that seems like a you know what? Why don't you just slow down a little bit? You don't need any extra energy. You you're you're fine. Just make a lap without the extra boost. Then we'll talk about maybe turn taking the tra the training wheels off and letting you go a little bit faster. <laughs> yep. So uh, I found that quite amusing. 
two more things I want to say about the V8 car is that they also converted the, these cars to PBR shaders, so they should look much more sharp. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they also updated the engine, gear shift, transmission, backfire, rev limiter sounds, and pit limiter sounds um, have been added as well. So some things, a lot, a lot of changes going on with the V8, which I'm really excited about because obviously I can't wait to get back out there and race that thing. But I'm going to wait till I get my real internet. Yeah. None of that fake internet stuff. No. Um, oh, and here, the Kia Optima. Now... Here's how it probably should have read. I, I will read how this sentence should read. Various new sounds have been implemented for this vehicle, including engine, gear shift, transmission, brakes, backfires, and limiters. However, nobody still races this car, so why bother? I know. <laughs> it's like we did a lot of work. It's like, come on. Come on. Look. We, come on. So, uh, yes, unfortunately, the Kia, as we have mentioned, is not a popular car. Um, despite Chad's yeah. love of uh, the way that it handles. Yes, um, except for on cold tires. Uh, the Chevy Silverado and the Toyota Tundra in the NASCAR Gaming World Truck Series, uh, This ve those vehicles, rather, have been uh, converted to use GGX shaders. I don't know um, what that means, but okay. I don't either. I've never seen that before, I don't think. Nope. Um, and they've also updated the vehicle appearance to match the 2016 NASCAR season. Mirrors have been adjusted, and the template for this car has been updated to reflect the above changes, <laughs> which means your uh, template that you download to like customize your paint scheme and upload it to Trade and Paints, for example. Um, and then we also talked about how the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Chevy, Toyota, and Ford now have the 2016 season digital display dashboard and functionality has been added. Uh, the digital display used in these cars is highly customizable, and the screens used vary drastically from team to team in real life. Oh. So, in an attempt to give you the same options, we've only given you three. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. They, they, they vary drastically from team to team, so in order to help you do that, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, which you can uh, select and modify in the F8 screen when you are driving those cars. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing it, even though, as I mentioned earlier, I won't see it when I'm actually racing. Hmm. But um, I uh, am kind of looking forward just to seeing it uh, down there because uh, it is kind of cool. Um, and then they have updated the appearance of each vehicle to match, which is kind of important because there were some slight modifications and we needed those to be updated. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like in the sim, the, the dashboard that is. However, the dashboard itself, which while it will be accurate to its NASCAR counterparts, uh, I think it looks stupid. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure why they decided that they couldn't just go with the old style dials. Because you know what? Not everything has to be digital. Sometimes you just need to see a little red needle moving around a circle. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of them. I think they look dumb. But, hey, at least at least we'll look the same dumb. So that's important. Accuracy yeah. and all. Uh, also, We're this... Ju <laughs> what was that? I said that's what we're all about. Yeah, accuracy. Even if it's stupid, we'll be the same stupid. Um, <laughs> this just in. GGX is a micro facet model which is very successful for modeling light reflection from surfaces. In other words, it's a shader like Blin, but ten times more awesome. That's from the first thing that popped up when I googled GG, GGX shader. So <laughs> apparently it has to do with the way that it handles light reflections and... Uh, glossiness and such like that so i guess it'll make it more accurately reflect the world around it is how i what i get out of that so yeah uh one thing that i need to mention is that the radical sr8 quote unfortunately the developments for season two did not have the desired effects on car performance drivability and world world wow real world <laughs> correlation um as a result this vehicle is restored to the 2016 <laughs> season one specs. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. They're all like, I don't know, we I made some changes in season two. It's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I told you putting so, the wheels on top of it wasn't going to help. Let's put them back on the bottom where they belong. So, And you might want to give them a steering wheel. It could help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Another thing I saw is a super late model also has PBR shaders now as well. And the old V8 supercar, the 2012 one that we used in one of our fun races one time that everybody loved, now has the V6 tires to match the newer V8 supercars. Uh -huh. Now, here's one of my favorite things about the track section. At Atlanta Motor Speedway, they fixed an issue with cars appearing off the ground near the entrance to pit road. See, this is one of those things that we yep. can finally go and say, hey, I wish they told us this boat before, so now I'll load up Atlanta and just drive around the entrance to pit road until my car flies off to the planet that it came from uh, the, it's probably <laughs> mars it's probably not as uh dramatic as that is likely it probably if you look really closely the wheels probably just don't touch yeah. the ground quite but i'm gonna see <laughs> yeah uh let's see and of course <laughs> and only because i wish to say it again the autodroma enzo e dino ferrari new track released Test out your circuit racing skills on this counterclockwise Italian racetrack steeped in history. Yes, now another autodrome track is Monza. And one of my favorite things is they uh, a missing wall cap has been added to the pit out. So uh -huh. does that mean that the, the wall was wearing a baseball cap and it went disappearing? Perhaps. Somehow? No and so now they're like, oh, he doesn't have his cap, so they gave it back. He's going to get sunburn on his head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two more of my favorite ones. Um, at Irvindale, the pace car now completely exits the race <laughs> groove before the green flag is given. <laughs> Always a good move. It's like, yeah. go, go, go. It's like, I don't want to. <laughs> There's a pace car in my way. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right, black flag, black flag, black flag, passing the pace car. Yeah. It's like, but, I, but it told me to go. <laughs> And then my other personal favorite one is that at Martinsville Speedway, they fixed a pit road cheat by placing some collision volumes. So does that mean that we can't go in the infield of Martinsville now? I don't know. And because that used to be the most fun thing ever just to goof <laughs> off with and do. Fix the pit road cheat by placing some... I mean, it, yeah, it, that kind of sounds like putting up invisible walls so you can't get to areas you could previously get to. So what could you do? Yeah. Just cut across the track and just come out in the back instead of where you're supposed to. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, oh, and here's here's an important one for those of you who actually do use tech tracks. Long Beach Street Circuit. Fix the brake markers so they no longer disappear in low detail mode. It's almost like, well, you know what? If you can't get a good enough graphics card, we're not going to tell you when to brake. You figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll show you. Um... At Phoenix International Raceway, they fixed a surface type issue with a portion of the wall along the front stretch. And at Road America, they fixed some missing textures on some of the far terrain areas, which um, when I did the ITSR World Endurance Championship race at Road America a few weeks ago, I noticed one of those that they have now fixed, or they're going to fix, sorry. Um, and it was just this giant grayish hole in the trees, and it was kind of funny looking. Um, it was one of those things where I kept going around the racetrack. It, it was in the, uh, I guess what you call the carousel there. Is that a thing at Road America? Yeah, I believe that. It, the the big sweeping right-hand turn. Yes. Yeah, I believe that yes. is called the carousel. Okay, so just out from there, there was this giant gray hole in all the trees, which obviously doesn't look realistic. And I remember during that race, every time I would come around that corner, I would notice that. And I kept thinking, is that my graphics card? Or is that just the way that the track is? And so finally, at one point, I'm coming around there, and I came on the radio and goes, please tell me somebody else sees the giant gray hole. <laughs> and they did. So I was like, yay. <laughs> hey, I'm not going blind and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so the things that you get distracted by when you are racing. Indeed. Um, they made a bunch of fixed, um, well, fix an issue with white splotches and inconsistent white red curb, corner curb lengths in several places at Nurburgring, and they fixed several geometry issues on the track as well. Um, 
which, of course, that's probably... I, I swear, every time we have release notes, they're going to be like, oh, we found something else, because that is a big track. <laughs> like, whoa, wait, never noticed that before. Yeah, so there's probably going to be a lot of those fixes over the years of Nurburgring existing on the surface. So... Ah, well, and I think that about covers it for the release yep. notes. Again, um, you know, feel free to read through the full version, but um, you know, since we don't have Morgan Freeman available, we're not going to read all of them. Those are just the things that kind of caught our eyes as we went through them. Um, so, that is... Last two things. Last two things. Oh, and also, uh, they have released, uh, not in the show notes here, but they have released the schedule for what we have for week 13. It is right on the front page when you go there. Uh, same sort of thing. I won't bother going through everything here, but uh, they're going to have some official series to try to bump up your license before uh, before the end of the uh, season. If you wish to do so, never happens, but you can try if you want. Um <laughs> And then they're going to have some fun series as well. Obviously, the Pickup Cup, the Dallara, Dallara Dash, the Carburetor Cup are all going to be still doing their regularly scheduled races. Uh, so you can do those as well. Uh, for those of you new to the sim, week 13 is a, the week that they put up between builds or while they're having the build uh, implemented so that you know most of the official series are off for that week. So it you know, having a new build come out does not affect championships and stuff like that. It's kind of a a mess around kind of week sort of thing. Uh, so, uh, if you are sensitive about your uh, your I rating, your safety rating, uh, be extra careful when you are picking out your series to make sure that they are you know if they are official or unofficial, depending on what it is you are looking for. So. Uh, I'm sure several people have probably made that mistake where they're all like, oh, week 13, it's fun, and then they jump into an official series, which turns into a crash fest, and their safety rating dives. So don't be that person. Uh, pay attention to what is what is um, uh, official and unofficial during the, uh, during the week. Uh, one thing that caught my eye with these, though, was the Identity Crisis series. And if I read this correctly, it is going to be the Sprint Cup cars... Uh, the Chevy, the Ford, and the Toyota uh, at Talladega, or um, do, 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 at Charlotte, sorry. Uh, but they're also going to have the two Camping World trucks, uh, the Chevy and the Toyota, there as well. So you're going to have at Charlotte, you're going to have the Sprint Cup cars and the trucks, so varying speed differences there. Uh, but they're not going to multi class it by the sounds of it. And the Sprint Cup cars will be required to make at least one stop per race. So I'm guessing they're fuel limiting it to make it so they have to come in while the trucks are free to run non stop from green to checkered. So I guess to try to even it out and see if they can have uh, actual competition between the two. Um, but that should be interesting. Uh, so that's going to be at Charlotte all week by the looks of it. Um, and then a couple other series as well. And then they'll have the. Uh, when uh, Imola is released, they are going to put the Formula Renault 2.0s on uh, on that track. That's going to be your uh, unofficial series or your official unofficial way to uh, test out that new track is with the uh, the Formula Renault 2.0s. And uh, then the one thing that made me sad was the fact that they are they're having their Week 13 i racing figure great. With, uh, which is where they go on the figure eight configuration of Irwindale Speedway, uh, which is complete and total madness. And they put the Audi R8, uh, the BMW Z4, and the Mercedes AMG GT3s um, out on that track. And that just made me sad because those are some really nice looking expensive cars and they're going to smash them all to crap. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, if you look on the front page uh, of the uh, website, they have all the Week 13 information there, so uh, go check that out. So if you want to make some choices as to what you're going to be racing next uh, next week while you're just kind of testing out the new build and having some fun, well, that's what you get to look forward to. So I will, um, I, I might try to get in uh, that identity crisis thing, because having the trucks and the cars out there seems like uh, it could be kind of fun. And then I might head out to Irwindale and smash up some pretty cars. Because, you know... Uh, Why not? Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, uh, moving right along, we have uh, some information on 
the uh, big race that's happening. And like I said, there's a few different uh, time frames, and I think one is coming up soon. Uh, and that is, of course, it is Nurburgring 24-hour endurance racing this weekend. And uh, we have a team mostly uh, ready to do this race. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't fit up with a lot of people's schedules. And that is a big commitment because it's a 24-hour race. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so why don't you tell the fine folks what we're going to be doing and then uh, make your impassioned plea. <laughs> Come race with us. Um, so yeah, the Nervy Green 24 hour race is the first time slot. Goes off in right at about two hours uh, from the time that we are recording this. And then there's going to be another time slot, which is at 1300 GMT on Saturday, which is 9 a.m. Eastern time. And then another one a little bit later on in the day at 1700 GMT at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So, uh... The Nurba Green, of course, it is using the giant version, all of it, 24-hour. <laughs> You're going to be driving for a while version. Uh, I think our team is using the – actually, I know this now. But um, uh, we are using the Audi uh, race car. And the thing that I was going to say is that um, – I think it's like seven laps. Maybe you can stretch it to eight. I want to think of fuel. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, just just think about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, so. it's like I got a full tank of you know, gas. I'm gonna make eight laps. <laughs> yep. Um. <clears throat> so several hundred turns, uh, 172 or something like that. Uh, around the track so it's going to be a long race it's going to be I, I personally i mean there's obviously going to be some fantastic drivers who are going to be kicking some tail out here but i personally think especially in some of the lower splits which is probably where our team will be that survival will be the name of the game uh on this one mm -hmm. so um myself and jeff mcpherson and adam hollick are teaming up to drive the Audi uh around the nurberg green and the giant plea if those of you that are listening live and those of you that um catch this like immediately uh and in time if you want to come join us please do because that would be helpful yeah so that people don't have to stay up of all hours of the night and it's not going to be me <laughs> because i have a very busy weekend so i'm kind of spotty on when i can do this um so I guess you could really say, in reality, there are only two people that are participating on our team because even though I'm going to put in a few hours, I don't feel like it's going to be very much compared to what Adam and Jeff are going to try to do. Um, but here's the thing. Even though it is such a big track and you're going to be out there for such a long time and there's it's kind of difficult to raise people, there's a lot of different style of corners, difficult to remember them and stuff, mm -hmm. um, it's only seven laps to a tank. So you're basically doing seven lap spurts, you know, it's like, all right, seven laps and go. Yeah. And pit. <laughs> go again. So go uh, now think, stop going. <laughs> yes. So I think like, I hate to say it this, this way, but it's almost in my mind, even though it's going to be very difficult to do this, it's almost going to be easy because you're only going for so long. Uh, lap wise because of the way the fuel is so it's it's mentally I think it won't be as bad as it it might sound is my point um, <clears throat> I'm personally just going to be on a country drive like I am not concerned about you know being super super quick in this one at all um, I, my goal is to just not crash even if I lose some time it's better than sitting in pit road losing lots of time so um, I'm hoping uh, to just enjoy the ride and bring the car back in one piece to give it to Adam, who will be coming in. But if you would like to race and have the time to race, even if you can only do maybe one or two hours, uh, please immediately let me know so that I can add you in to our team. Um, otherwise, wish us well. Uh, it will be streamed. Jeff McPherson is going to stream it on his channel which I don't remember the name of. It's like Operation Puppy Warming or something like that. <laughs> that can't but, be. Um, that can't be right. <laughs> um, it. Uh, so I'm going to host it on our IRTM team Twitch. 
Um, so that's twitch.tv slash um, IRTM team. And for the record, Jeff's is Operation Warm Puppy. So I was close. Yeah, that's okay. That's disturbing somehow. Uh, yes. <laughs> but um, anyways, you can check out. I'm pretty sure that he says he's going to do the whole thing. I'm not guaranteeing that, but uh, at least you get to check it out some and uh, see how we fare. So it's going to be quite the challenge. As I mentioned earlier, I have a very, what was originally supposed to be kind of a wide open week where I wasn't going to have much going on, has now turned into an extremely important weekend with stuff that I cannot miss. Hmm. Um, some big commitments. And I uh, am going to drive for a couple of hours, and I think within the first five hours of the race, give or take. And then I hope once I get done with the stuff that I have to do Saturday during the day, at least in my time zone, um, once I get kind of done with that, before it gets too super late at night where I live, I can jump back into the car and fill in for somebody for a couple hours and give them a break. And then that's going to be it for me because once it gets kind of late, like 11 p.m. ish, I need to go to bed because I have to get up very early on Sunday. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm not – I am going to be participating, but I'm not as committed, if you will, as I have been in past ones. So right. I don't feel like I'm really a part of it, even though I am. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's too bad, too, because with uh, – you know, that I can't participate in it. I mean, between, between this one and the Indy 500, I was really looking forward to both of them, and in the end, I'm going to miss both. So that's uh, – <laughs> that is sad, but uh, – you know, those races I'm gonna do, I'm not doing them. Yeah, you know, those races I'm really looking forward to that I really want to do. Yeah, nope. Yeah, nope. So, but uh, anyway, so I racing today motorsports numero uno will be out there trying to tame the ring, as they say, I think somewhere. And if I remember to um, to change over my Twitch channel once we are done recording this, uh, I will also attempt to host his. Uh, and his page as well so that I can, uh, you know, so that there will be several places you can go and be like, I forgot where they were told me to go, then you'll have options. If you don't yeah. want to go to Puppy Monkey Baby uh, or whatever it was <laughs> his, uh, his Twitch channel was, then you can go to Minor Chats. <laughs> yeah, so IRTM team is, I've already got it set up to host it, so, um, and that's on our Twitter. It is actually, if you go to the IRTM team, exactly what I just said, um, Twitter account it is pinned there's a tweet pinned to the top so uh, it'll have you a link directly to where you can check us out during the race um, and like I said earlier we're going to be driving the Audi uh, which uh, I have got to paint as soon as we're done with this which is going to be super simple but that's okay I've got to paint as soon as we're done this so I don't know it's, it's I haven't painted it up yet I can practice but I've got to go to the paint shop and Make sure our car doesn't isn't just like all black, I guess. Well, actually, it's not all black because it's using my paint scheme, so it's it's red at the front and then it fades to black. But I'm gonna make it like what we've been doing in every road race, or not road race, but an um, endurance race, where we have the uh, children's what is it called again? Uh, American Childhood Cancer Organization, and it's gold and blue. Easy to spot. Cool. Anyways, so that is the Nurburgring this week, and good luck to everybody participating. And if you, in my opinion, if you finish this one, you've done pretty darn good. Yeah, that's that's going to be the that's going to be your benchmark right there. I think. Yes. Um. So last but not least, we will tackle the poll question results from the month of May. And we asked you during that month, um, how many third-party programs do you use with iRacing? And then the options are kind of self-explanatory, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, or more. <clears throat> and the winner with 32% of the votes was two. Two. Uh, two. 26% of you said three. Um, fifteen percent of you said four, eleven percent of you said five, and nine percent of you said six or more. And the lowest of all of them was six percent, only using one third-party application. 
So it was you're either all in or you're not doing anything. So there wasn't a lot of people just doing one. Although there wasn't a zero there, I noticed. Yeah. So that could that those that six percent could have been all like, I, I guess I'll go one because Chad never gave us another option. Oh come on! Everybody's got to at least have one. Most people use Teamspeak. True. Um, what did I vote for? Do you know? Because I think I know I what don't. I voted for. You you should know what you voted for. It was a long time ago. Um, well, I believe I went with six or more because the question was, do you use with iRacing, not necessarily do you use while racing? Um, because I do the streaming stuff, I do the broadcasting stuff. Um, that goes, You voted for six or more. I did. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, because... Well, between everything, you know, the timing and scoring and the team speak and the OBS and the, you know, and, 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 and. There's a lot of stuff that I use while I'm uh, while I'm broadcasting races or streaming races. So uh, that's why I voted for six or more. Now, when I'm actually doing the racing part, it's, and I'm not streaming, and I'm not on team speak because you guys aren't around, I don't think I use any, come to think of it. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't th I don't think I use any uh, any other programs while I'm actually just straight up racing if I'm not streaming or talking to you guys on the uh, on the TeamSpeak. <clears throat> so, what uh, well, what did you vote for? I voted for five because, and I pretty much always use these. Um, the, the only one that I guess would be questionable would be the TeamSpeak one, so it might go down to four. But um, I use the Z1 dashboard. And oh, right. There you go. There's there's my one. I actually do use the Z1. But I, I knew there had been some one of them, but yeah, uh, but yeah that's right. And, and then I use the program that makes my seat work, and then I have the iFlag thing going on, and then, of course, TeamSpeak, as I mentioned. Um, and... Uh, there was one other one that I can't think of now. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> Why can't I think of it? Um, but anyways, it's either four or five, just depending on, you know, if somebody's on with TeamSpeak or not. Um, so, uh, I don't know why I can't remember the name of that program. But anyways, <laughs> that is what I voted for. So... Uh, we appreciate you guys coming out and voting in the polls, and I don't know why I said coming out, because it's not like you had to go anywhere, except for our website. And speaking of said website, there is a new poll question that is there and is quote-unquote similar to what we've just done, but in a different style. So uh, go out and vote, because you only have until June 30th, so you got one less day, because it's not a 31-day month, so... Yeah, so get on it. Better get out there and do it. I've already voted, so ha. Oh, wow. And so have I, actually. I was on uh, I the ball. I was, I was the first person to vote. Um, thing to note is that that poll question ends on a Thursday, and provided that none of us are sick or doing anything that will prevent us from being there to do the show, we will be able to do the results on that particular night for the show, and it's my birthday. Cool. Love to sing happy Slap birthday. Have a party. Oh, and uh, Danny, of course, pointed out trading paints. Derp, of course. So. Derp. That's the one I was trying to think of. Thank you, Danny. I knew there was another one. <laughs> you know, the one that we all run. I guess that's why he didn't bother putting yeah. zero. <laughs> yeah. See? Booyah. I'm a smart person. Of course, now there's probably somebody out there who's like, I don't use trading paints. I, I, I believe it uh, it affects the purity of eye racing and uh, pollutes the waters with uh, paint schemes that are not meant to be uh, used, so uh, I don't use it. Um, now, what's interesting is he put Z1 dashboard times six. Yeah, I saw that. Six instances of Z1 dashboard? How interesting. Many, how many dashes do you need, dude? <laughs> I know. He needs all the dashes. <laughs> Well, this one's my track map, and this one shows me my oil temperature, and this one shows me my water temperature, yep. and this one yep. shows me how much gas I have left. And, <laughs> and this one shows me how much uh, I need to, um, you know, um, stamina I need to make it to the end. And this one tells me, you know, what I need at the grocery store. 
<laughs> this one this one tells tells me how many steps I've taken today. Uh, this one tells me my heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, the Z1 dashboard does not do all of that. No, no, this is uh, yeah. To, to be clear, uh, we are. Uh, uh, this is meant for humor. Uh, he does confirm yep. that he does use six of them. I'm sure they are all for very useful purposes that the Z1 dashboard really actually does, as opposed to the things that we've just said. Um, yes. Which, by the way, that is one of the cool features about the Z1 dashboard is how many uh, instances you can open with it. So it's a pretty handy-dandy little program. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, so, with that being said, um, I think we are just about done here. Uh, yep. So, the key takeaways are, read those release notes. We're having a new build on Tuesday, so if you're doing any racing or anything on Tuesday Night League stuff or whatnot, then make sure that you download that build beforehand. Uh, don't get caught out with, oh, right, I was going to do that race, and then have the big thing saying, updates required, and being, you know, and then missing whatever <laughs> you're trying to do. Uh, the uh, schedule is out for season three, so make sure you go there and plan what you're going to do for next uh, season, for the next uh, three months or so. Uh, and of course, uh, cheer on our team in the 24-hour race. I, based on the stints that everybody's doing, the uh, early morning stints, you know, when it's been going on for 18, 20 hours, we're probably are probably <laughs> going to be comedy gold because. Uh, we have two people who are basically Iron Manning it with uh, Chad kind of hanging out occasionally. So uh, I'm guessing the uh, 3 o'clock in the morning will probably lead to somebody who's looking like they want to die, is my guess. Yep. So <laughs> so that could be, uh, that could be amusing. Um, oh, and Danny has pointed out, for those who are not watching the video portion, uh, track map fuel calculator, car adjustment screen, weather, telemetry, and relative times. So that all checks out. That all yeah. is all very useful stuff. So that all makes sense. Um, let's see. And, oh, only one other thing I will mention, and this is just a personal plug on my behalf, because, hey, you know what? I'm a video gamer, and uh, you all know it. Uh, I've started playing another game, uh, that is called Overwatch, just released by Blizzard, having a lot of fun with it. So if you are playing Overwatch, then you will have a Battle.net account, which is Blizzard's version of Steam, basically. Uh, and if you want to add me as a friend, if you're going to be playing Overwatch so we can play some matches together, because it's a team-based, class-based shooter thing, which is okay in public, you know, random games, but would probably be a lot more fun with people that you are going to communicate with and uh, coordinate your attacks with and all that good stuff. So uh, if you are playing that, add me. I am Ratface number 1949. Uh, I'm not the 1,949th person to use the name Ratface. It's just the way Blizzard does their username stuff where they add this other tag on the end of it so people can have the same username. So it is Ratface with two Ts, of course. Uh, number 1949 if you want to add me and play some Overwatch because that game is really fun so uh, but with all that being said we should be back on our regular schedule next week uh, we should be recording on Thursday night unless something else pops up I'll be back in town uh, won't be on the road or anything weird like that so we uh, hopefully we'll come back to you next week on Thursday night with our build impressions because we'll have had a couple days to play around with it and uh, let you guys know what we think about everything that has been released so with all that being said, thanks to all of you out there for listening. We really do appreciate it. Uh, remember, the show is available for download on iTunes under the podcast section, where we would really appreciate a review to help us get the word out. The show is also archived on YouTube under Ratface Productions, and it's Chattelac. You can check out the website for live shows, archives, information, links, and the polls we mentioned on the show at iRacingTodayRadio.com. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at iRacingToday. He is at It's Chattelac. Please email any questions, comments, and poll suggestions that you may have to feedback at iRacingTodayRadio.com and feel free to add us as friends on iRacing. If you are not yet a member but you plan to join, please refer either Trevor or myself in the referral box when you sign up by entering Trevor's email, which is ratface with two T's at gmail.com or mine, which is iRacingLegend at gmail.com. 
But until next week, ladies and gentlemen, remember that the race is rarely won in the first turn. But it is often lost there. Good night, everybody.